Captain's Log, Subdate 20713.2. While we await the arrival of the sub, Subfleet has transported some supplies to me. This would include replacement bio-neural gel packs, replicator power cells, kana, and, um, more condoms. I have a sneaky feeling Crewman Bork was put in charge of my inventory and supplies again. Last week, I made an opinion piece on freedom of speech. My stance can be portrayed as that of near-absolute freedom. Unless you're criticising me, in which case you're not allowed to. How dare you? <laughs> I'm kidding. I like criticism. In that, I referenced hate crimes. Because they are a problem, because they erode at one's ability to speak freely. If we're going to introduce consequences, that is another area entirely, but everyone should be entitled to say whatever they think. Which is why I framed it around hate speech, but for this video I'm going to respond to hate crime. To do that though, I'm going to focus on the United Kingdom, because if I start encompassing all other countries and cultures when it comes to this, it's going to get very messy fast and I'm going to look like a moron for not understanding the vast cultural differences in many other countries. To start, we should start with the definition of what is a hate crime in the United Kingdom. Last week I read from the Crown Prosecution Service. I'm going to cite it again. The term hate crime can be used to describe a range of criminal behaviour where the perp is motivated by hostility or demonstrates hostility towards the victim's disability, race, religion, sexual orientation or transgender identity. These aspects of a person's identity are known as protected characteristics. A hate crime can include verbal abuse, intimidation, threats, harassment, assault and bullying as well as damage to property. Now I've made my point quite clear on this, Verbal abuse is not a crime. Intimidation to me is still not really a crime, nor are the majority of threats that do not contain within them any level of violence. Harassment is a crime. Assault, bullying, well bullying for the most part, encompasses nearly all of the previous ones, but we can, if it becomes physical, include that. Most places have rules and societal norms where bullying is not tolerated. It should not be treated as a crime. And damage to property is a crime separate to hate. Yes, what motivates somebody can be pigeonholed as a hate crime of some kind if that person is a protected characteristic. But I'll be honest, enough of that happens that it is not a hate crime for the majority of people. I'm also going to start by saying a couple things I think are important now. I do think for the most part, many wouldn't be talking about hate speech law and their aversion to it if it was only fines that were issued for it. But because of all the different aspects that hate speech encompass, custodial sentences are quite normal, and that is a dangerous territory to tread. In the United Kingdom, hate speech laws can be traced back to 1986 with the Public Order Act. This applied to England, Wales and Scotland. Part 3 was the first introduction of racial hatred, which defined hate against a group of persons by reason of the group's colour, race, nationality or ethnic or national origin. However, in 2012 this had to be changed, because many pointed out, the Christian Institute campaigned for this in fact, that using the term insulting words needed to be removed. This was supported by many stand-up comedians, actors, actresses and politicians. The government at the time, Cameron's, was actually against it, but the House of Lords supported its reform of Section 5, which came into effect in 2014. In 2006, Part 3A was yet again amended and dubbed the Racial and Religious Hate Act. This part in particular saying a person who uses threatening words or behaviour or displays any written material which is threatening is guilty of an offence if he intends thereby to stir up religious hate hatred. This one will come back to later with one of the cases I would like to focus on. However, it is claimed that the part here protects freedom of expression by stating that nothing in this part should be read or given effect in a way which prohibits or restricts discussion, criticism, or expressions of antipathy, dislike, ridicule, insult, or abuse of particular religions, 
or the beliefs or practices of their adherents, or of any other belief system or the beliefs or practices of its adherents, or proselytizing or urging adherents of a different religion or belief system to cease practicing their religion or belief system. Hard X to doubt. We'll get to it soon enough. It was yet again, Part 3a, amended in 2008 to include offences of inciting hatred on the ground of sexual orientation. All the offences in Part 3 attached to the following acts, which the use of words or behaviour or display of written material, publishing or distributing written material, the public performance of a play, distributing, showing or playing a recording, broadcasting, it really does go on. In 1991, the Football Offences Act was also added that forbade indecent or racialist chanting at designated football matches. So I want to use three cases that have been used under hate speech laws, and three cases in every instance I did not support the outcome. The first one I'd like to talk about, Chelsea Russell. Now I did a video on her in 2018 or 2017. She quoted a line from a Snapdog song, I'm tripping on her Instagram. She, being a white girl, using the N-word, with an A at the end, twice, got her into a bit of trouble. Hate crime investigators were alerted to the presence and charged her with sending a grossly offensive message by means of a public electronic communications network. Here's the context. She had posted it after copying it from a friend's page as part of a tribute to Frankie Murphy, who had died in a car accident at the age of 13. Not that it mattered, the district judge, Jack McGarver, found Chelsea Russell guilty. She had to pay a £585 fine, was given a curfew and an ankle monitoring bracelet. This conviction had to be overturned two years later. It took that long in a Crown Court to turn that one round. And I feel very sorry for Chelsea Russell because, honestly, it wasn't a hate crime. It was, oh, perceived hate crime. Right. Next, we will go to Harry Taylor, who under Part 4A of the Public Order Act was charged because he had on numerous occasions left some anti-religious cartoons in the prayer room of the John Lennon Airport in Liverpool. This is the second case to take place in Liverpool because Chelsea Russells also went through the Liverpool court system. Harry Taylor had in fact in 2006 been convicted of similar offences. Judge Charles James of the Liverpool Crown Court sentenced Harry Taylor to a suspended six-month prison sentence for two years, a five-year ASBO, which bans him from carrying religiously offensive material in a public place, ordered him to perform 100 hours of unpaid work, along with paying £250 in costs. The airport chaplain was the one that grasped on him because he couldn't be bothered to stick the paperwork in a shredder. Okay. Earlier I mentioned that religious freedom stuff, right? Even with this context? Right. Okay. The final one I want to use as an example. You know which one it's going to be. There's this man called Marcus Meekin. I don't know if you've ever heard of him, but he goes by the name of Count Dankula. Some <coughs> tosser. I'm joking, I'm a fan, don't get triggered. Who became famous on the internet for posting a video where he taught his dog, his girlfriend's dog, sorry, to raise his paw. Buddha is the dog, by the way. To raise his paw. At a command. I'm not going to say the command, I don't need that aggro. He did it because he wanted to annoy his girlfriend, and he succeeded. Well done, Marcus. Everyone go subscribe to Sue Hulk. I'll link her channel below, her cooking is fantastic. The video was viewed over 3 million times, and he got into trouble for it. The funny thing is, though, journalists were outside his house when police arrested him. Bit strange. Okay. He was eventually convicted. In the courtroom, they had to find someone to take offence, and they even conceded context did not matter. The sheriff's court is an absolute joke. He is still, by the way, going through the appeal system. I believe this might even go to the European Court of Human Rights. I fully support that, by the way, because this is an absolute joke. He was fined £800 after being found grossly offensive for posting that video. My first video on cancel culture... People told me that it doesn't exist, okay? Well, Marcus couldn't get a job because people kept on going to those potential employers and stopping him or getting him fired. Doesn't exist though, right? Many comedians did stand in Marcus's corner. Ricky Gervais, David Baddiel, 
Stephen Fry, in fact. Others were very quiet. Ahmed Jalili was against it. Graham <coughs> Linehan, yes. Apparently a comedian. No, he's not. In the context of these cases, where context mattered, yet it really didn't in the court, offence has to be taken for these to even exist. In all of these cases of hate speech laws being used, I am against the law, as it relies on offence being taken. And yet, in two of them, they had to find someone to take offence, perceived offence, and the other was a chaplain who couldn't take a little criticism about his faith. When it comes to the other factors I earlier mentioned, when it comes to what is and is not a hate crime, there are other laws that already exist for them. Context is what you're using, and then you're pigeonholing it as hate speech, which does lead down a rather dangerous road, where some will always be a victim, along with the risk of tarring someone because of the subjective nature of UK courts. What I suggest when it comes to these kind of laws is that we deal with facts and not feelings. When it comes to what is and is not hate speech, it is subjective and context should matter. Because if context did matter, not one of these things, and certainly none of the earlier mentioned cases, would have ended with a guilty conviction. There are many other factors that you can take into account with this. As I've said, context does matter. But when you start to break down the others, the other variables, they are not hate crimes. They are other crimes. And I'm not saying people should be free of absolute consequence for things they say, but I don't believe fines and prison terms for any of what I've covered so far was the correct way of dealing with any of it. In the case of Chelsea and Marcus, it looks like an excuse to use the court system to hurt somebody, cause... But I could be wrong. And if I am, I'd love to know what you think. I hope I've made my point quite clear on this. If I haven't, please do let me know in the comments down below. As a final thing, I shall be streaming on Twitch tonight. If I don't see you there, have a cracking Monday and thank you all for listening.